Good morning and welcome to worship here at Emmanuel. Today marks the beginning of, well, two new things. It is the first day of a new year, according to the church calendar. You know, Advent is a time that marks the beginning of the new year, and it's a great time for us to encourage you to just slow down a little bit. I, I know it's a, it's a busy time of year, but, but to slow down and, and take time to remember that Christmas is coming. The gift of God's light that comes into the darkness will shine, and the darkness will not overcome it. Today also marks the beginning of our new Advent Christmas series called Worship the King. In this time when everything is different, and it certainly is, we remember that, well, really nothing has changed, especially when it comes to the most important things like Jesus and the love of God. So grab your favorite morning beverage, grab your Bible or your Bible app, and get ready to receive the good gifts God wants to give to you. Good morning. My name is Bonnie Alcott. The scripture reading for this morning is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord was shown around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's me, your animated Mrs. Artman. And today I want to talk to you about da 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 angels. So tell me, what do you think of when you hear the word angels? I'll go ahead and give it to you. Especially this time of year, you might think of how much fun it is to make angels in the fresh fallen snow before Christmas. Or maybe it makes you think of the one year you were a friend dressed up as a fancy haloed angel for Halloween. Or it could even make you think of that one angel you saw in a play or a movie that was super memorable. Did it make any of you think of one of the many stories of the Bible? Perhaps the best known story to us is how an angel came to Mary to bring the message and let her know that she would be having our Savior Jesus the angel brought a message of good news to come. What about Daniel in the lion's den? Do you remember what happened to him? Daniel continued to pray to God even though the king told him not to, and an angel came to him and thanked him and brought the message that he would remain safe due to his faith. We can't forget about Abraham. He received a message from God on more than one occasion. Who can forget when he took Isaac to sacrifice on the mountain? And at the very last second, an angel commanded him to stop. Abraham's willingness to follow the word of the Lord saved both his son and grew in his faith. Did you guys notice something? Did you see that all of the times that angels showed up, there was something the same? Can you guess what it is? Here's a clue. Here's where things get real. Whoa, cool. Did you see what happened there? I really did get real. Check out my hand. The answer is that angels are messengers of God. How cool is that? They are like God's very own personal FedEx delivery agents. Okay, so let's do a quick review. What do we know about angels? We know that they are messengers. And if we look at the stories of the Bible, we can see that as messengers, they spread the word of our Lord, 
Angels help others in times of need. Angels protect people. And angels help guide people. I have one more last question for you. Do you do any of those things? We do. We spread the word of our Lord. We go to church and not only spread the word of the Bible, but act in the way the Bible tells us to act. We help others in times of need. Like the food drive or Operation Christmas Child. Great job on those, by the way. We protect people, not just policemen, firemen, or our armed forces. Even little acts like stopping a little brother or sister from getting hurt counts. We are all children of God, and you are helping protect another child of God. We guide people. Have you ever helped a friend or a family member make the right choice when they might have made the wrong one? Then you helped guide someone. When you think about it, in a way, we are also angels. So the next time mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or an aunt or uncle tells you you are being such an angel, it might just be true. Now, we don't get wings or halos, but that doesn't mean our work here is any less important. As stated in Hebrews 13.2, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. It's the golden rule, and by using it, we are not only becoming one of God's messengers, but also making sure that we treat all others with kindness as well. Because you never know when there might be an angel saying right. Glory to God in the highest who brings peace to the earth. We just heard in the scripture reading about the exact moment that God broke the silence. God's glory was shining around the angels as they proclaimed the good news that God was up to something. That the newborn king, the one God promised, had now arrived. Here on this first day of Advent, we see the light of Christmas just as clearly as when the sun first breaks the horizon. Our king is coming, so let's worship him now, lifting our voices in song.
God created light out of darkness. We have no way of really comprehending what absolute darkness or silence might be like or feel like. I do feel like I've come pretty close, though. When I was younger, I ventured down into some dark, damp caverns in Missouri with nothing but a headlamp and a few spare batteries. And when we were far enough away from the hole that we crawled in, (laughs) we decided it would be a good idea to switch off those lamps. Now, when we did that, I could not see my hand in front of my face. I, I could feel the darkness surrounding me. With the absence of any kind of light, we were immediately consumed by darkness and stillness. And then fear set in. And then panic. And then we quickly switched the lights back on because it became terrifying. Terrifying is how I would describe absolute darkness and silence. Even down in that cave, even with the knowledge that I had a light on my head that I could turn on at any moment, I was still terrified. I don't even want to imagine if I actually found myself in that kind of darkness without any light at all. And yet the reality of our sinful condition is that we are left without any light. Sin would would lead us into a dark, damp, cavernous pit and extinguish any light that we may have and leave us right there to feel our way around, endlessly searching, desperately grasping, hopelessly wandering, until at some point we succumbed to the darkness and died. Now that's quite a happy message to begin Christmas season with, isn't it? (laughs) But here's the thing, it isn't Christmas yet. You see, part of the church's rich history is to adhere to a liturgical calendar that helps us keep in time with the story of God and his redemptive plan, his plan of salvation, to rescue sinners from the darkness and bring them into his light. And today, as you heard Pastor Timon say, marks the first day of a new year on this calendar. And this New Year's Day begins rather quietly. It begins in stillness. It begins in darkness. In four weeks, we will celebrate Christmas, (laughs) Uh, a season and and a holiday of light. But today, today we begin in darkness. And we remember that for nearly 400 years, God seemingly remained silent. There were no prophets. There were no special revelations. There were no hints that God was up to something. The book of Malachi is the last book in our Old Testament, and it's the last book believed to have been written before we get to the events we find in the Gospels. It's also probable that the Israelites who were enslaved in Egypt after the time of Joseph and before Moses That time was about 400 years. So if you're waiting on God to do something in the midst of this darkness we find ourselves in or the midst of this current mess, after only about a year, (laughs) we might have to practice some patience. There's no doubt as we look back to the beginning of the year and consider where we are now and what tomorrow might be like, we know that everything is different. Shopping looks different. School is different. Church is different. Social gatherings are different. The way we do most anything now is different than the way it was a year ago. But what we want to remember today is that although everything is different, nothing, nothing has changed. (laughs) Or to be more precise, the most important things haven't changed. People still need people. We are still called to love our neighbors. And sinners still need our Savior. Regardless of whatever other changes may occur in our daily life, one thing hasn't changed. God is always in control. 
God was, in, God was in control for the 400 years. He was seemingly absent from the Israelites in Egypt. But he wasn't absent. Instead, he was preparing. He was up to something. He was getting everything ready to deliver his people from their bondage. And God was in control for the 400 years. He was seemingly silent. The time between the Testaments. But he wasn't silent. He was preparing. God was up to something. He was getting ready to come to earth in a way that no one could fathom. And he did. He did just that. God came down to earth as a baby, born into the creation he himself created, subjected himself to the harshness and coldness and darkness of this world so that he could lead us out of darkness and into his light. God has been in control since he created all things. And though the world looks different now than it did then, and it will look different tomorrow than it does today, nothing has changed. God is God. Christ is King. We are messengers, and we carry the gospel into the world. God isn't absent or silent. No, God is speaking. He is active. He speaks through his word. He speaks through his sacraments. He speaks through and acts through his church, who are his people, you and me. God speaks and he acts and he loves through you and me. You are God's representatives. You are a reflection of his glorious light and of his grace and peace. You know, the way you conduct yourself matters. Not when it comes to your salvation or to how God feels about you. God loves you. But the way that you conduct yourself today, tomorrow, in light of other people matters to those who don't have the same light of Christ that we have. Your salvation is assured in Christ. You know this by faith, but others don't have the same assurance. Especially now when everything is different and when things are uncertain and people are anxious or afraid or angry or sad or frustrated or fill in the blank. Especially now, those people living in darkness need an angel to appear in the dark sky and sing a beautiful song to them. They need someone to come and sing of the grace and peace that God gives, that they might know that this good gift is for them and that gift is Jesus. Now, I mentioned that that you are a messenger. You can be an angel. Maybe you scratch your head at that. Well, the word angel in Scripture is angelos. It simply means messengers. Now, the angels that appeared in the sky that first Christmas night and the angels that appear all over Scripture, those angels are unique beings. They, like us, are created, but they are not humans, and humans don't turn into angels. But you and I are angels in the most simple sense of the word, in that we are messengers. We have a message to give. And what is that message? What is the message that we carry? Well, we we would describe it as the gospel, the good news. Now, the Greek word for gospel in Scripture is euangelion, or transliterated as evangel. Does that word sound familiar? Evangel, evangelism, evangelist. And also notice, in that word is the word angel. You are messengers with a particular message to give. You are angels, you are witnesses, you are evangelists. You bear in your very being the good news that you proclaim. Christ is the gospel. Christ is the good news. And Christ is in you. You have the light of Christ. And we know that that the light that is in you, that comes from God, cannot be overcome by darkness. Christ has defeated darkness. Christ has defeated sin by his power on the cross, and he gives you that light. 
This light that we have in Christ in you will disperse the darkness. This Advent season, despite the days literally getting darker, but also perhaps from your viewpoint, circumstances might grow dim. Despite the chaos and the confusion and the uncertainty that we face today, but that humanity has always faced because of sin, look into the distance. Look for the light that was promised. Look at the light that has already come, the light that we see in Christmas. But look for a new day. Look for a new and more glorious day that God has promised will come. And when Christ comes, he brings with him a new dawn. When our king king comes again in all of his glory, he will rid the world of darkness once and for all. And all the while, shining, shining his light. And while we wait, we are called to shine that same light light, the light of Christ's love and service to a dark world. A new day is coming, and it's going to be glorious. But like those others in Scripture, the Israelites in Egypt and those between the Testaments, we're going to have to wait. And while we wait, until Christ comes again in all his glory, come, come to the manger, Come to the cross. Come to God's word. Come to Jesus. Come and worship. Worship Christ, the newborn king. Amen. How exciting it is to hear the good news that Christ has broken the darkness of sin in our lives. But not only do we get to receive this good news, we are also God's angels, God's messengers, who get to tell others about this great news. But as things go, as sinful people, we will be tempted to keep this good news for ourselves and not share it. And so as we think about this joyous opportunity, let's slow down again and pray asking God's forgiveness when we keep this good news to ourselves and asking for his spirit to empower and embolden us to shout it from the mountaintops. So join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, you broke through the darkness of sin and sent your Son to be the light of our salvation. You sent your angels to proclaim this good news to shepherds who then went and proclaimed what they heard to everyone they encountered. And you now send us to share this same good news, bringing light to those who remain in darkness of sin. Forgive us for those times when we have kept the good news to ourselves or have even been ashamed of you and your gospel. We are sinners. But we are sinners who have been forgiven and have been given the light of Christ. Strengthen our faith and increase our courage that we would sing the glorious wonders of your grace, peace, and salvation to all. Lord, there are some who still walk in darkness. Speak through us and through your church on earth to their hearts, that they may hear your word and believe. Lord, we also lift to you those who need help or healing. Hear us and answer our prayers according to your will. For Sarah Seidhamel, Nikki Rudson, Bob Kramer, Marlene Laramie, Sue Schroeder, Janet Jaworski, Amy Morgan, Erica Saran, and all those whom we love. We trust in your great name and in your promise to hear and answer. Bless us with your light that we might not dwell in darkness, but rejoice in the good news you bring to us in Christ. In his name, amen.
Emmanuel is called and committed to sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, now at Christmas time especially, but all year round. And so as we are being reminded, even though things are different, nothing has changed. The world still needs to hear the gospel. And so your gifts and offerings to the church help us continue to do that through our ministry here at Emmanuel to this community. You can give your offerings then in in three easy ways. Number one, you can mail in your offering or just bring it here to the church and place it securely in the drop box. Or you can text in your offering using the number you see on the screen or you can give online and even set up a recurring gift through our website. Your generosity helps us carry and proclaim the gospel we've been given to those who need to hear it. Please also fill out the connection card. You can just take a quick snap of the, of the QR code or go to cc.emanuelcl.org and just let us know that you worshiped with us today. We have three things to remind you of this week. Number one, Advent midweek devotions begin next week online. It's going to be a great, fun, and meaningful devotion, a great experience for for people of all ages. Number two, you can pick up communion elements this week for use in next weekend's worship service. So look online for more information about that or the email that will come out. And number three, Advent by Candlelight, which is a special event just for women, is this Friday, December the 4th. This year it's going to be an online experience, and it's bound to bring some Christmas joy to you. Again, watch your email for more details on these and other opportunities at Emmanuel. We are glad that you worshiped with us today. You can begin your role as messenger of the gospel right now by sharing this worship service on your social media or with a friend who may need to hear the gospel, who needs to hear about God's grace and peace. And so as you think about ways to share the good news in the upcoming weeks, may the light of Christ break through the darkness and may God's face shine on you and bring you his eternal peace. Amen.